Hi, uh, my name is Mark Cooper. I'm the Harbour Master at Dart Harbour Navigation Authority. Um, this is the second in a series of his um, uh, videos about the uh, waiting list um, and how to apply for a, a mooring. Um, the first video um, just covered the, a little bit of early thinking before making an application. Um, so things to consider were um, car parking, um, where you're going to launch your tender from, whether you're going to use the water taxi, those types of things, um, and just to get a bit of familiarity with the river. Um, this second video is a bit more detailed um, and, and should be useful for uh, most people applying for a, a mooring. Um, and then the third video will cover um, those people who are applying for a mooring who don't yet own a vessel and think you're buying one. Um, the third video gives you a bit of, of, of some hints as to how to uh, best navigate the waiting list. Um, so um, moving on to this, this, this video, the second in the series. Um, if you've uh, watched the first video, you'll be, you'll have your sort of ideas already forming about where you want to be on the river. Um, there's a series of um, um, analysis that's on the available on the website. Um, it's available through the um, annual uh, birth holders um, page. There's a link there and it's called waiting list analysis. Um, the waiting list analysis was done in first time in 2017 when we uh, took details of um, all of our customers are on the waiting list um, and we confirmed um, which sort of mooring they would like ideally um, bearing in mind that um, some people are on more than one list the average um, customer is on two or three lists um, and we, we used that just to get an idea of what was going to be popular in the future um, the logic was that the um, waiting list um, details and demands desires if you like of the customers should map we should try and match our mooring design with that with that demand for the future. Um, what I'll do during this video is I'll show you a little bit of that analysis and uh, show you a few of the graphs that appear in, in the analysis. Um, the analysis was done again in 2020, so it's pretty fresh for, um, for this year. Um, we intend to conduct analysis about every two to three years just to see if there are changes. Um, we can use it for our mooring optimization work, try to match the mooring layout to the, to the demands of customers. In an attempt to try and make the list move more smoothly, so we're not allocating um, just to certain people on the list, and other people are not 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 getting anywhere because they're not moving on the list. Um, so the first graph I want to show you right, is a um, is a graph that appears um, and is representing um, each of the mooring areas. So you should now be able to see um, a graph. Which shows you um, it's this graph here. Um, it shows you the uh, an example of a mooring area. So that's just one area, geographic area where we have moorings, and it shows you uh, the numbers of people on the list for that area, and um, they're organised by boat size. Um, you can see the, the blue columns are the numbers that were on in 2017, and then you can see the the red line or the orange line is the, the numbers that are on the, that same list in 2020 by boat length. Um, we've done all these for each area. What it, it's useful because you'll be able to get some idea of um, how the vessel that you own or the thing you're th the vessel you're thinking of buying um, best fits into the spread of um, people on the list um, because that will help you to determine um, how quickly you'll move through the list and hopefully manage your expectations because some of the lists do, do take a long time to move. Um, very quickly, the difference between the blue and the red shows that um, our most common boat size on the list in 2020 is now up at 11 to 12 metres, whereas in 2017 it was down at 10 to 11 metres. Um, you also see a bit of a hump here around the sort of six, seven metres, which is unusual. You'd expect to see a normal bell distribution. Um, you think the reason for the six, seven metres, that's the day boats, that's the things like the ribs, and they, around around that sort of length, five to six metres, they're becoming more popular. So we're, we're struggling with how to arrange berthing um, arrangements for those vessels that just launch during the day. Um, in some case, have a mooring, but they're, they're moving around the river, they're using our facilities. So we'll need to cater for those. But the important bit here is if your boat is between nine and say 12 meters, you're probably going to move pretty steadily through the through the waiting list. You're going to move because the, the, hopefully there'll be a reasonable amount of stock around the, the length of these vessels. I'll come on to the mooring stock later on. 
in, in one, for, on, on one of the other graphs. Um, but if you're to the right of this graph, if you're up at 13 to 14 metres, there aren't many boats on there, but obviously the number of moorings you fit on will uh, is most likely to be reduced. So you're probably going to move slower if you're down this end and quicker if you're down the, the shorter length uh, of vessel down this end. But obviously we'll, we'll come on to a craft later on that talks about the mooring stock specifically for that mooring location and how you compare those two things. Um, so that's the first graph. The second graph that's important is this one. This is a graph that shows uh, the number of people on the list. So you see the numbers here across the top. And this is the number of people on the list by um, the, the year they joined. So you'll see in this list here, it's got a long list. Um, the three people who joined the list in 20, 2005 and in 2020 when we did the analysis um, those three people are still on the list waiting for a mooring. Now that doesn't mean that the waiting time for those moorings in this geographic area and it's just an example again um, is 15 years. What it means is that generally these people down this end on this side of this green line here in this area um, they've probably had more than one mooring offer um, in some cases, they may already have a, a mooring um, or be moored in a marina. Um, but the reason they're still on the list is they're waiting for something very specific. They're waiting for something to suit their, their requirements. It may be um, something local to where their house is, outside the house, being able to see the, the mooring from the house. Um, in other cases, these may be people who join the list with the intent of buying a vessel but just haven't got around to buying one yet. Their, their intent is to, perhaps people come down to Dartmouth in the summer, they're interested in retiring to Dartmouth and they're going to buy a boat. And these are the people on the list here. Um, when you move over to the middle of the graph here, you'll see um, the numbers get slightly bigger. Still a fairly flat, flat sort of curve here, not huge numbers. Um, and you'll see there's a, an indication here in the middle where there's a very low number that, that allocations have been made from this area. Um, again, people here, 2008, they've been waiting a long time, but they've probably had one mooring offer, or again, are waiting for a specific geographic position. This is not really um, too much of an issue. The, the really important point of, the, of all of the graphs that show waiting times is really the boundary between this section of um, people where there are low numbers and where the numbers rapidly increase here. You see 37 down to 17 and 9. And what that tells me is that when we did the analysis in 2020, which was just done in the spring, um, this is really the area we're allocating from over the winter of 19 and then into the spring of 2020. Um, we can tell we're allocating from here because there's huge numbers here and quite small numbers here. So for the average boat length, for people who are perhaps not the right hand edge of the, the previous graph I showed you, this is the sort of time that you would expect on this list if this was your geographic area. This is the sort of time you can expect people um, from who joined the list in 2016 have been allocated a mooring over the winter of 2019. So they're, they're, they're waiting three to four years. That's a, an average time. Some of these people down here, down in the end, waiting longer, they have special requirements or perhaps have larger vessels or the, the mooring stock doesn't match. Um, so I'll, I'll come now on to the, the third graph that accompanies each of the geographic areas. This is the third graph. This shows um, each of the lengths of vessels, so a little bit like the first one, um, 2020. And it also shows the mooring stock. So the mooring stock is shown in the arrow, in, in the orange, and the demands are obviously in the blue there. Um, now, this, this in theory shows that if you're down the right hand side here where there's a three and a three, 18 to 20 meters, there's three moorings of that length and there's three people on the list. That means three people need to give up a mooring before the third person on the list gets a mooring. Um, fairly uh, standard sort of position. Same here at the 16, 17 meters. If you're 17 to 18 meters, slightly worse. There's only one mooring in that category. Um, and we do we do allocate from slightly either side of the berth length. We're trying to optimize the use of the berth. So we don't like to give a very large mooring to a very small boat. So there's normally a bit of a tolerance on there. Um, but these guys, these, these are going to be okay. They, they're going to move. But when you come down here, if you look back at the 11, 12 meters, you see that the, the demand there is 32 people waiting for just eight moorings. And if you then start to take this, these peaks around 10, 11, 12, and you count the numbers demanding a mooring and the stock, these guys are going to wait quite a bit longer than the people where there's a, a, a better match of length of 
um, available to some of the length of vessel. So that's how to use the list. Um, this, the, these three graphs exist um, for um, all, all of the various mooring areas we've got, including the, the tender and dinghy list. Um, it's, it's worth looking at these because in most cases, we think about 80% of our customers come um, to Dart Harbour, they put a vessel on a mooring um, when they first allocated one, and then it probably takes them time to get to the area they want to be in and then eventually to the mooring. So if you the mooring that they really want. So if you if you look at the most popular berthing areas from the 2017 survey were um, walk ashore berths, swinging moorings and swinging moorings in specific locations. Um, most people are waiting sort of five years and beyond to to get their, their desired mooring. Um, but don't let that put you off. You've got to be on the list. If you're not on the list, you'll never get the phone call saying uh, there's a potential allocation. Uh, the other thing to bear in mind is that in a number of cases, we have people who come to the dart with their vessels and they stay on a mooring um, for sometimes three, four, five years before they actually get their first allocation. Um, that means that they're either staying um, in a temporary mooring, perhaps a temporary over a year or a temporary over a winter period, or perhaps they're staying on visitor facilities. Um, what they're almost certainly doing is paying more than they would if they're allocated a, a permanent mooring. Normally there's, a, there's an extra charge there. We're trying obviously to make it fair and stop people coming in as visitors, staying and using the facilities over the peak periods of summer and paying less than the annual berth holders who have the mooring for the whole year. Um, so it's really important that you don't get put off by the way this. Come and talk to us. Um, watch this video. If you haven't bought a vessel yet, watch the third video in the series because that talks more about the vessel characteristics. But don't be put off by the, the, the in some cases, what look like long waiting times. Put yourself on the list. Come and talk to us and we'll talk about how to meet your requirements and how to how we can look after you until you, you get to the point where you are actually allocated a mooring and you're happy on a, on a berth. Um, final thing I'll say is um, one of the most unpopular, or not unpopular, but the least desired moorings of the 2017 survey were the trot moorings. Trot moorings are where your boat's more, more uh, forward and aft. Um, sometimes you're on a mooring by yourself with a line out for the boy ahead and a line for the boy astern. Sometimes there's two vessels alongside each other, which makes it a bit easier when berthing. Um, the, the reason I mention this is that they weren't, um, they were really the lowest type of mooring that were desired by people. But when we talked to people who were already on the moorings, very few of them wanted to move mooring. So it was a really odd thing. We think people didn't understand how to use a trot mooring. They get onto a trot mooring. They're waiting for a pontoon or a swinging mooring. Um, they get used to using the mooring. They generally get to know the people alongside them or on berths ahead and astern. So they talk to those guys, get used to the area. And at the point when we offer them a a mooring that's, that's in the more attractive category, you know, the, the ones that are more in demand, um, some of them tend not to move. So they've got used to the mooring, they've got used to berthing, they're happy where they are, they don't like being on a pontoon where lots of people around them. Um, so just, just bear that in mind as well. Have a look at the third video if you don't have a boat. If you do already have a vessel and you're happy to fill in the forms, fill in the forms online, they're in the annual berth holders section of the website, accessible from there. Um, once you've had a go at filling them in, that's the time to come into the office and, and come down and chat specifically to one of our um, office staff um, about your specific requirements so we can help to just refine that, your, your demand down to um, something that matches your, your desires and will help you to work through the system. Hopefully the, we, can, we can manage expectations. Thank you.